We continue to preview the 2023 college football season. Our stop today is Pineville, Louisiana, where we get to visit with Drew Maddox, the head football coach for the Louisiana Christian Wildcats. And coach, a seven and four season last year, a turnaround from four and seven the year before that. You win your final four games of the season. Can you tell us a little bit about last year as we get ready for 23? Yeah, so, uh, you know, that team, uh, you know, when I got hired here, I guess four years ago or three years ago then, uh, you know, it was during the COVID year and all that, but uh, I told them that we were going to get it turned around and uh, all, they were going to have to work hard and, and do all that. So we really had that this past year circled as our year to kind of flip the program. And I told everybody they should fire me if we didn't get it done, you know, uh, and that's the truth. So uh, anyways, uh, we did and they, they came on strong towards the end. I think we ended up actually winning our last six last year. Okay. Uh, and so uh, it, it was a big deal, but uh, you know, it's a new year. I've been coaching long enough to know it's a, it's a completely new year. <laughs> that that much is certain. You've gone through the spring. How did the spring look? It looked well. Uh, you know, we, we had a, a large turnover on the coaching staff. You know, a lot of these guys that helped me get it going over here, you know, found better jobs, and I don't blame them and all that, you know. Uh, so a few of those guys have moved on, and, and so we had a lot of turnover on the coaching staff. So I, I felt like I was coaching coaches more than maybe players, but – when you have an older team, that's probably a good thing. So it went well, uh, you know, putting in a new offense, you know, for the most part and uh, and things like that, trying to figure out who's going to call the defense because we lost uh, both both coordinators from last year. So, uh, anyways, it was good. It was uh, eventful and uh, very. it was very good when it comes to getting things done because we had a lot to, to do, really. A new offense in place, you say, Coach. Uh, one of the pieces coming back from last season, though, who was a big part of last year's offense, is Sal Palermo the third. Uh, honorable mention in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Uh, threw the ball for you. Actually, the second leading rusher on the team last year as well. Can you tell us about your offense? Yeah, so, uh, you know, last year, based on what people were doing to us, uh, we, uh, we, we, you know, we were going to have to throw people out of what they were doing or run people out of what they're doing. And, and then uh, we kind of felt like Sal gave us the opportunity to do some of that with a run game. So he really, I'll tell everybody, like, he really didn't, it was on us as coaches, you know, we we're too stupid to figure out what to do with him at first. And uh, Coach Giardino was with me last year, you know, he's since moved on, but uh, and he, he put this plan together of, of uh, you know, getting getting Sal the ball a little more, running the ball, and see if we could get people out of some of the coverages that we were seeing and all that. And it really worked. Uh, you know, he, he rushed for – I think he had 100 yards on four of the last six games rushing. He would have had it on the other ones. We just stopped running him because we didn't need to. Uh, and so uh, he's back. He's a leader. He's everything that, that we kind of want here. You know, he's a guy we can point to and say – uh, hey, this guy here uh, is what it looks like. You know, he comes to work every day. He works really hard. He has like a 3.9 GPA. You know, he just graduated. He's actually going to get his MBA now uh, from here. And so uh, I can't say enough enough good things about Sal Palermo. I really can't. He's just a great teammate, and all his teammates love him and all that. And uh, I look for him. You know, we, we believe that God will bless what you set your hands to do here, what you work hard at. And uh, – and he's kind of exemplified that. So I'm excited for his senior year to uh, see what he can do because I think he's he's going to have a big year. Coach, some of the pieces around him, who will he have to work with this year as well? Yeah, so, uh, you know, our, our, our tailbacks are back from last year, except for minus one that was a senior graduate transfer from Abilene Christian. But uh, the other guys are back, so he'll have a, we'll have a bevy of backs back. And uh, a couple of our wide receivers are back, so – uh, he'll get, you know, Sammy Feaster will be back and, uh, and Glenn White will be back. And so uh, a couple of guys came on late last year as well that, that, that will be there uh, that were coming off injury and thing like that. So uh, he'll have some guys. Biggest, biggest part for us is going to be the O-line. Uh, that's really the only part from last year's team that we lost. We lost some guys from the old offensive line. So uh, we got to gel that together, but um, we'll figure that out. We're speaking now with Coach Drew Maddox, the co-coach of the year in the Sooner Athletic Conference here on Midwest Sports Net, and I encourage you, uh, please continue to watch the videos. We're previewing the 2023 college football season all summer long. Coach, uh, on defense, you lose Michael Latin, an All-American, and uh, set a lot of records there, as uh, well as uh, leading the way for you all in sacks. Uh, Logan Brimmer uh, did his job as well, getting to into opposing backfields. He's back on the defensive line, as is Andre Reed in the linebacker spot. 
Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Brimmer always tell everybody like he might have been an All American too, but I just hear that the NAI doesn't do that. You know, we don't we don't have two All Americans on the same team, uh, especially a sophomore. So you look at his stats; I think they were right behind Latin on just about everything. I mean, he he had unbelievable stats. So, uh, anyways, he he's he's here. He's back. He's worked harder. Uh, that's the crazy part about him. You know, he was just a sophomore, and uh, you know, we me and him have had some talks, but uh, he really grew as a human being this past off season and just killing it in the classroom and doing all the things that we really preach here other than football. And so what I found out is, you know, it seems like those guys, you know, got to reward them. And uh, so anyways, he's, he's back and uh, killing it, doing a good job. Uh, and then, you know, Bubba, we call him Bubba, but Andre Reed is, uh, is, is about as good a football player. You know, we, we always pick, he's only about five ten. And we've tried to not not let him play, you know, because uh, he's too short. He's too this or that a few times. And he's just so good that he keeps finding his way back to being our starting linebacker. And uh, he's a leader on that defense. He works so hard and all that. He'll he'll have a monster year. It'll be a senior year and have a monster year. And, uh, Demario Weathers, he's back. Uh, he's a guy, I don't know if he uh, – he was an honorable mention guy last year. He's kind of our enforcer at free safety. Uh, he'll be back for his senior year. Uh, all the corners are back. They're all back. The entire defense is back minus Michael Aden. So all the big guys in the middle and all that, they're all back. So they'll be here. And, uh, you know, they didn't make any all conferences last year and they're frustrated about it, you know. So uh, the the work ethic up there on the defensive line has is, is been easy, you know, for, for me as a coach to, to watch because they all feel slighted. So it's always nice when somebody gives somebody a reason to work hard. That should be something that uh, senior athletic conference opponents should be concerned <laughs> about then if that's the case. Uh, one player, though, that did get uh, conference recognition, honorable mention, Mason Ingram, your punter. Tell us a little bit about your special teams. Yeah, so we went out and got a, got a really good punter. So the first year I was here, you know, uh, first full season, we went four and seven in our special team. I think we averaged like 27 yards a punt or something, just miserable in it. Uh, anyway, so I went out and found one. <laughs> and he was our guy last year. He was a freshman. And uh, I don't know, I guess he averaged somewhere around 38 or 39 as a freshman and uh, got scared a few times. But by the end of the year, he was doing everything we asked him to do. And it hit some really good ones with hang time and all that, you know, hit him 40 yards and has good hang time. So he'll be back. He'll be good. Uh, uh, you know, and, 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 and we had a change on special teams there, too. So, you know, and I, but I have a, I've had a lot to do with special teams in the past. So um, anyways, we'll, we'll kind of still be the same on, on some things. But. Uh, he'll do a great job and, uh, you know, Levi Hilburn's back too. And he, he was a kicker for us, Hunter Martinson, another guy that, uh, was a kicker kickoff specialist for us last year. Uh, so they're all back as well. Um, and so, uh, we're excited about them, their growth. Uh, Levi is going to be really good. Uh, he's going to be really good. He was a freshman last year for us and kind of took over the kicking duties, uh, for PAT and field goal late and, uh, did a really good job, uh, uh, really did so. Uh, he's he's automatic from inside forty, and so we we like him that way. And uh, and he like I said, he was a freshman last year, so uh, special teams looks good. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to keep that going. Well, it's a turnaround last season, four and seven, seven and four. What can you do from there? The season gets underway on a Thursday night. The folks from East Texas Baptist make the short trip to Pineville. That's August 31st. That's a Thursday night game to open the season. Another home game, Arkansas Baptist, a Sooner Athletic Conference opponent this year, September 9th. And your first road game, you travel to Langston a little bit earlier this year than you have the last two years. You've had the Lions number. As a matter of fact, 2021 put a stop to an undefeated season uh, against Langston. So you head back up there on September 16th. Can you talk about the start of your season? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, the ETBU games one that they, everybody's been trying to get me to play. So, you know, so the COVID year, my first year here, we played in the spring and we beat those guys and it was the school's first time to beat them in, in almost a decade. And so they play for what they call the border border claw down here. And it's a trophy. It's in our, our trophy case and we beat them. And so we've been trying to uh, – Coach Maper was there. Uh, they've since changed coaches. But, you know, we've been trying to get that on the schedule ever since that time uh, when, we, when we went different places. We went to the Sooner and out of the ASC. And so, uh, anyways, uh, I'm glad we got it going. It's going to be exciting. It's, it's a good rivalry for the people around here. And uh, hopefully it will be packed out. And 
Uh, we're excited about getting that game back on. Uh, Arkansas Baptist, we got to play them last year, you know, kind of figure out who they were because it was a new deal for us. Uh, but we're excited to uh, have them home. Our home opener here is always nice, uh, you know, to get one, the home opener here. And so uh, we, haven't, we haven't lost it here at home in, in a long time. Uh, and something we kind of – I think we're seven or eight games. I don't know. Somebody else could probably tell you. But we haven't lost in almost two years here. And so at home, so uh, we're excited to get that there. And then going up to Langston, those guys are good. You know, uh, we've just been lucky, I think, the last couple of years. Uh, you know, they probably don't know who we are and, and, and all that. Maybe they will they know now, but uh, they're super good. The coaches do a really good job up there. They're always in the top 25, it seems like, in the NAIA. And, uh, you know, it's always a big game. And uh, anyways, it's it's it'll be exciting. I hate that we have to go back there for the second year in a row, uh, you know. It is what it is. It's like another reason I tell them, like, all right, I appreciate y'all giving me the schedule. You know, if you if you merge those schedules, even you as an outsider looking in, you look at the schedule that I had last year and you look at the schedule this year and you try to scratch your head and go, well, why is he going back to Arizona? Why is he going back to Langston? Why is he going back to Arizona, uh, Oklahoma Panhandle State for the second year in a row? Why did Texas Wesleyan get switched and they're not at me, but I have to go back to them? So I, I'm not real sure who all came up with that, but – I really appreciate it because what I found out about our guys is they don't need a they don't need a uh, they don't need very much to fight you. You know what I mean? So if I if I tell them if I galvanize them and tell them, hey, they gave you all the worst schedule because they don't want you to win. <laughs> oh man, they get ready then. You know, it gets fiery around here. So uh, I'm glad that we're gonna get to play to that. But that's that's the schedule. So yeah, we're going back up to Langston again, and uh, we're excited about we're excited about seeing everybody and all that. Well, Coach, success to you all this season. Coach Drew Maddox, again, co-coach of the year last year and uh, trying to build on a 7-4 and four season in 2022. Thank you so much, sir, for taking time with us today here on the Summit, and we will follow the Wildcats. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate you.